to our service today. We come to worship together in the house of the Lord. We come to celebrate Jesus Christ in this place. So we uh, invite you to be a part of the worship and celebration today. I would like to say uh, thanks to Pastor Bill for preaching last week and taking charge of service and thanks to uh, Kelly for taking charge of the praise team. Praise team, good job. Thank you uh, last week. Also, I'd like to thank those of you that have ex expressed uh, personally or through text or by card uh, your sympathy in the loss of my mother this, this past week. I really appreciate that. And I uh, mean that from the bottom of my heart. God bless you. For today's service, we're going to go to the Lord together in prayer and ask his blessings to be upon us in this place. Heavenly Father, we just come before you now in Jesus' name. We give you thanks, and we give you praise, and we give you glory, and we give you honor, Lord, as we have gathered together in spirit, whether we're here in person or watching at home, Lord, we thank you that we can join our hearts as one together in this place. Touch us, O oh Lord, through your spirit. Touch us through your word. In Jesus' name we pray, and we give you the thanks and the honor and the glory. Amen. Before we get into the song set, we have a couple birthdays we need to uh, to honor today. Don Chris had a birthday this week. We don't give out a raise, but uh, at least five. So, <laughs> and also, uh, my understanding, Stephen Stephen Grovick also this week. If you're watching, Stephen. Janice, whoever from that group, we also want to honor him today. So let's do the birthday song.
Oh, Lord, you sit on the throne. You reign supreme. There's none like you. We look to you, Lord. Open up the heavens, Lord. Pour out a blessing upon us, Lord.
access it later, or someone can access it later if they want. You also can go to our church's website where uh, they are posted uh, usually on Sunday afternoon, and that's at Griffith Church of God. Dot O R G. Uh, check those out. Also, our Wednesday evening Bible study sessions are also recorded and are on our website, Griffith Church of God. Dot O R G. All right. Today, I invite you to turn your Bible with me to Psalm 62, again, verse 1. Again, thank you for all your support and the loss of my mother this week. She was 90 years old. She was um, had some physical issues, but her, her mind was sharp. And over a period of about a week's time, she contracted COVID-19 and died in the hospital. So it was a bit of a shock for us. But I, I do know where she is. Uh, my mother was a truly, truly committed Christian woman. Of course, I'm biased, but I, mean, I don't think there was anything that tempted her to do wrong in her, in her life. You know, she was a, some, some of a struggle with different issues, but she didn't have any issues. She just was totally committed to following Jesus Christ. She loved the Lord with all of her heart. She loved her family, of course. She loved her church, and that was, that was her life. She was such a powerful influence on my life, on my sisters, because of her consistency and my dad, who died several years ago, I don't think there was a day, as I knew them, that went by that they didn't spend time together praying and, I mean, a, a specific coming together and praying and also reading their Bibles. And there wasn't a Sunday they didn't go to church unless they were out of town or they were really sick. And so they were a great example to me and to my sisters. My younger sister died several years ago also. My older sister's still alive with us. So Mom, you know, she just uh, has been a rock for us. So I release her. I understand she's in heaven. I'm happy for her. I'm fine. I'm going to be good. But you know, this for, this thought came to me uh, when I was going through that hospital, knowing that she probably was not going to survive. And that is, this thought came to me, God is my refuge. Yeah. We can turn to the Lord. Amen. The title of this message is, My Refuge is in God. Take it from the text. My Refuge is in God. A refuge is a place you can withdraw to, a place of safety. How many appreciate a place of safety? And a place of renewal. Not only safety, but renewal. A place where you can go and recharge, where you can get away from the attacks of the world around you and the crises that you're facing. Some of you have a refuge in your home. I mean, maybe Christina can relate to this. You know, she still has children. Most people have a place when the kids are screaming. You know, in some homes, it's the adults that are screaming. And most people have a place where they can just go. If it's their own room or somewhere. And they just go, and they close the door, and nobody can get in, and you're like, oh, that's just so wonderful. Some people, they have to leave their home. Some people, it's their car, it's their refuge, and they get out, I'm going to the store. <laughs> I'm not sure which store, and I don't know when I'll be back. Parking lots make a great refuge place. Some people to drive in the park or whatever. In a time of battle, refuge is a place where you withdraw from the enemy and recharge. All of you. Now, Carol, she's got the grandkids sometimes. She loves, absolutely adores her grandkids. 
But I would venture to say here on Facebook Live that there are moments that she needs a refuge. And she goes and finds a place, you know, where she can get away from <coughs> the stress that little ones bring into your life. My refuge is not hard to find. My house is empty. It's just me and the Lord. So that's uh, pretty easy. And if I want to get away from there, I can come to church during the week when none of you are here. And it's a refuge still. So my car's a refuge. There's nobody in it for me. So uh, you don't need to hear my problems. Anyway, <laughs> you can find one pretty quick, pretty easily. But God is described here. My refuge is in God, a place of safety, a place of withdrawing, a place of renewal, a place of recharging. So let's begin. Psalm 62, verse 1. Truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He only is my rock. And my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will you attack a man? He shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. My soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock and my strength. And here's where the title comes from. And my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in oppression nor vainly hope in a robbery if riches increase. Do not set your heart on them. God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Oh Lord, we just pray today that you would touch us through your word. We pray, Lord, that you would inspire us. We pray, Lord, that you would renew us. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen us. We pray, oh Lord, that you would enlighten us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. And give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen. Amen. Now you can't shake hands. We don't want to shake hands. We can give somebody up like an air shake, you know, like this, or a wave, or high five, you know. You know, you can even jump up and do that if you, if you want to, you know. So I gotta be careful. I fall off the platform. That would not be good. That would not look graceful if I did that. Amen. My refuge is in God. Thanks be to the Lord. In time of trouble, in time of oppression, in time of sorrow, in time of distress, in times of perplexity, in times that challenge our hope and our faith, my refuge is in God. I can seek a place of safety. I can withdraw from everything spiritually and mentally, emotionally, withdraw into his glory and his presence. I can be renewed in faith. I can be renewed in hope. I can be renewed in energy, vitality, passion, He 
says in verse 1, truly my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. I'm just going to wait on the Lord. My soul silently waits for God. Why? Because I know he's the only ultimate refuge that I have. We can take comfort, we can take, we can gain some strength from those around us. Thank God for that, right? Isn't it wonderful when people support you in time of trouble? And you just gain strength from that and you appreciate that and it lifts you up. But that's limited. And they do all that they can. We do all we can for one another, and that's so, that is so helpful. But ultimately, who is it that we can look to to find that perfect place of refuge? My refuge is in God. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Because He can touch me where no one else can touch me. He can touch you in the innermost part of your being. He can touch your heart. He can touch your spirit. He can touch your mind. He can renew you in hope, renew you in trust, renew you in strength. Renew you in passion and zeal. Renew your energy. And take away your sorrow. True, my soul silently waits for God. And I'm going to wait on the Lord. Because there's nowhere else to turn. And I will not become impatient. And I will wait for him. From him comes my salvation. He is the source of my salvation. And therefore, my soul silently waits for God. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. He's all those things. So again, why? Do I silently wait for him because he's the only one? Emphasize in verse 2. He only, he only is my rock, my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How I realize that in your life as you go through life, no matter what comes your way, you don't have to be moved in a significant way. I shall not be greatly moved. I stand secure upon the solid rock, Jesus Christ. And we may be distressed, and we may be perplexed, and we may be in despair. In a moment of time, we may be in sorrow. But this is not going to destroy my life, whatever it is that we face. These things that happen will not move us off of that secure foundation, Jesus Christ, will not move us out of our relationship with God, will not take us off of the path that he has designed for us. I shall not be greatly moved. And then he references the fact that he's under attack by those around him. And, you know, as Christians, as believers, we can look to the world around us and say, we are under assault and under attack. How many know that in the world in which we live today? That we are under assault by the enemy. A spiritual attack. But God is greater. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But he says in frustration, how long will you attack a man? It can get trying. It can get difficult. It can be, it can be a weight. It definitely is in our lives. And he goes on to say, you shall be slain, all of you, like a leaning wall and a tottering fence. No real stability. You know, God is going to bring victory over you. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. That's all that they do. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Hypocrites everywhere, right? Who desire our destruction. And then, of course, the Hebrew word there, Selah, or Selah, 
which just means pause and think about that. by my soul. Wait silently for God alone. I reference verse 1 again. Notice the phrase and how it is basically repeated here, but a little different emphasis. Verse 1, my soul silently waits for God. I am waiting. And then he says to himself, my soul, speaking to himself, Wait silently for God alone. Continue to wait. My soul has been waiting. My soul silently waits for God, verse 1. Here he speaks to, you know, I said this before, you know, it's not really funny after so many times, but how many talk to yourself? You know, I do sometimes, right? Maybe that's not funny. That's probably a serious thing. But it's okay to talk to yourself a little bit, to take yourself and, you know, kind of figuratively speaking, say to yourself, wait silently for God alone. How many know we have to kind of slap ourselves in the head sometimes and get our own attention? Isn't that amazing? We, we get frustrated when we can't get other people's attention. How many get frustrated with that? You try to talk to somebody and they, they you can't get their attention. You know, they're like distracted or whatever. But my excuse is my hearing's not very good. So if I'm not uh, seeming to be listening to you, that, that might be the reason. But that's another whole issue, right? But that's frustrating. Well, you know what? There's, there's one person that sometimes you need to get their attention and you might not have thought of. That's yourself. If you're busy, too busy, you know, spouting off, as we all do, and focus on what you're spouting off about. Sometimes you need to get your own attention and say, hey! Self. <laughs> this is what you need to do. He says to himself, wait silently for God alone. Now, I know it sounds amusing. I'm trying to get your attention that way. But there's, there's, a, there's a truism there. There's you know, that, that, that's, you know that, that's a true spiritual application that sometimes we have to say to ourselves, just like, now you do it. Maybe you don't really. You, you do it. You get up in the morning and you realize that there are a lot of things that you need to get done and you're really not relishing the thought. Maybe you need to mop the kitchen floor, maybe you need to clean the bathroom, or whatever it is, and not your favorite activity. Or maybe the clothes are piling up and you need to do some laundry. I don't think anybody's excited about doing laundry. I'm not. At all. But sometimes you have to say to yourself, and you do, even though you don't realize that, I really would prefer not to do that. But listen. Listen, Paul, you've got to do it. Because it's getting to be a real problem. So you've got to get rid of it. Some of you are some of the things. It's yard work. I know my friend Bill, sometimes he, he tells me he really doesn't want you on Sunday afternoon. Right now, today, it's not going to be an issue for him. But there are times he feels like he needs to go home and cut his grass. And, you know, it's not what he wants to do. It's not at all what he wants to do. He would rather go home and take a nap, you know, enjoy a Sunday afternoon. But he says to himself, you've got to do it. Well, actually, Carol says to him, you've got to do it. <laughs> and that's probably an inspiration right there. Uh, when someone else does it, you've got to do it. So you talk to yourself. Those of you who are still work a job, I mean, it's like on a job day through the week. Maybe you run out long enough to go to that job. But you say to yourself, you got to do it. You got to do it. Get going. The alarm goes off. I don't know what time yours goes off. 5 a.m., 6, whatever, 7. And, and, and you say, oh, you know, I would rather not get up right now. But you say to yourself, you've got to get up. You still got kids in the house. You don't have to worry about that. They get you up, right? But if that's not the case, 
You may write, your wife says you gotta get up, or your husband says you gotta get up, but otherwise you would say to yourself, I've gotta get up. So he speaks to himself, he says, my soul, wait silently for God alone, for my expectation is from him. I'm expecting from him. That's my only source of expectation. I'm not expecting anybody else to help me. Other people can give me comfort and what a comfort it is. And they can, we can reassure me that they care about me and they support me and they love me and they're praying for me and they, they offer to do whatever they can for me in my time of need. That's what friends and family are for. And that's wonderful. But I'm not expecting them you're not expecting them in your time of trouble to be the total answer for you. Because there's only one that can be that. And that's God. My expectation is from Him. And so, so, just keep wait, waiting silently for God alone because He's the source of your help. He's the source of your strength. He is your supply. He is your healer. He is your deliverer, your supplier, your protector. My expectation is from him. He only, the only one. And he references again, as in verse 2, my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. Once again, he says. And then once again, as in verse 2, where he says, I shall not be greatly moved. Here he says, I shall not be moved. I just keep waiting on the Lord. Because I know he's my source. And I will not be moved. He will come to my aid. I have to wait for it. I have to wait for it. He will come to my aid. I shall not be moved. Oh, you know, I just can't help it. It's going through my head, that old song. Say it with me. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water. Some of those, those of you that are home, sing with us. I know you're singing. I can, I can hear it. You know who you are. Verse 7. And God is my salvation and my glory. Again, he mentions this rock. The rock of my strength. And there's a key phrase. And my refuge is in God. Yes, amen. Yes. My refuge is in God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You will never leave us. You promise never to forsake us. You are always with us, even to the end of this age. My refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Now he expands beyond himself, or he is speaking to himself. Now he speaks to others. How many have a testimony? I can say to other people, Here's what I suggest you do. Here's what I urge you to do. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. So I'm sharing that with you today. By preaching this word, I'm saying to you, this applies to me. This message applies to me. But now I'm sharing it with you. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. And then expand it to all of us. And not just to us personally, but to others. God is a refuge for us. Verse 7, my refuge is in God. Verse 8, God is a refuge for us, all of us. Aren't you glad for that? We have that word to share. Now I'm going to drop to verse number 12, the closing verse. Because it goes on and talks about, 
how God is in charge, things are just for a moment, and those who are mighty and powerful in this world today are really as nothing because God is in control and God has all the power. And there he says in verse, verse 11 and 12, God has spoken once, twice I forget. You know, he's, he, and that, he says, this is emphasized to me. That's just a way of saying, this is what God has said. This is what God has said, and I have heard it, and I have confirmed it, that power belongs to God. Why can God, how is it that God can be our refuge? Because power belongs to God. Amen. He has all the power and all the glory. And that power is extended to us. Power belongs to God. Also to you, O Lord, belongs mercy. Mercy belongs to God. For you render to each one according to his word. He is almighty God. He is the awesome God. We can count on him. He is our refuge. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand with me right now. I just want you to lift your hand, extend your hand towards heaven, towards the Lord. Of course, he's right here with us, he's in us, he's all around us, but his throne is in heaven. I just want you to extend your hand toward him right now. And I want you to, I want you to, to say to him in your own way, your own personal way, that he is your refuge today, that you're looking to him. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we extend our hand to you, symbolizing, oh God, that you deserve the honor and the glory, and also with open hand, we symbolize, oh God, that we want to receive from you, recognizing that you alone are our hope and our help and our strength. You alone are our salvation. Hallelujah. God, you are our refuge. You are the one we can look to, Lord, and withdraw from all that's happening in our lives and, and be renewed in strength and power and anointing and hope and love and faith and trust knowing you oh God have all the answers for us <coughs> thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah we praise your name Lord we praise your name we praise your name
it's very dangerous, you know. So I yes. don't have this special stuff. But anyway, pray for her. I told her, I told her we'd be praying for her. Amen. This is the Lord. And then, Ruth, I'm sure you still want us to pray for your uh, brother in law, Christmas. May God will continue to touch him and minister to him in a powerful way. Anybody else? I need prayer. Yes, your sister, Chrissy. Let's look to Chrissy up. We're going to have tests this week. Let's pray that she gets a good report. Amen. I really need prayer, too. You desire prayer also? Yes. yes. So remember, Ethel also, God will touch her in a mighty, powerful way. Praise God. Oh, yeah, let's pray for those that are not saved. Let's pray that God would save them. Yes. Amen. Not only the ones that are dear to us, but just in general. You know, people need to be saved in the yes. world. And let's pray that God would use us as a church, as a congregation, continue to minister to the world around us. Amen. If you have a need that you don't really want to express orally, just lift your hand. Amen. God knows if you're watching at home, God knows your need and your request also if you have to mention it to us. Let's look all these things up to the Lord. Lord, right now, in the wonderful, mighty name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, for every need. I'm asking, oh Lord, that you would pray healing, deliverance, and divine supply according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. 